Hi everyone and welcome to our video on point of view. Make sure you have your notebook set up correctly that you have your video visa on the left side of your notebook ready to go to reflect on the video after you're done watching it and your note taker on the right side to make sure you know um, you have something to refer to later on. So make sure you're following along and using the video to accurately complete your notes. Pause the video to give you enough time to write and make sure you're using your best handwriting because if you can't read it, then it's not going to be any help to you later. And rewatch the video at least once after you're done taking your notes just to make sure you didn't miss anything. So your note taker, we are talking today about point of view. Um, the points of view that we're going to talk about is first person, third person limited, and third person omniscient. Um, you might be wondering where second person point of view. That one is very uncommon in literature, but I'll talk a little bit about it at the end of the video just so you're not left wondering what it is and why we didn't include it. So let's start at the top of our note taker first by defining what is point of view. So when we talk about point of view, we're talking about a story and who is telling the story and what perspective they bring with them. So depending on who tells the story, it changes what it is that you're going to be able to know from them, right? This is the narrator. Whoever is telling the story is the narrator of the story. Um, and like I said, depending on who it is, it changes what the reader will and won't find out. So let's start with first person point of view. This means that it's told by one of the characters in the story. Um, somebody that is participating in the action is the one telling the reader about it. The reader knows what the character chooses to tell. Obviously, it's the author choosing, but you know the character is the one speaking in the story. So it's whatever in that story the, the character chooses to tell the reader. But of course, it can include everything they see, they think, and they feel because they're the ones telling you. So they know what they think, they know what they feel, and it just depends on the story, whether we know all of those or we only see part of it. And that's just an author's choice. The reader only hears the perspective of the character telling the story. That character can only speak for themselves. They can't tell you what someone else was thinking or what someone else was feeling because they can't get inside their head to do it, right? This person is just talking from their own experience. So you get their perspective. You see what they see, but that's as far as it goes, okay? Um, the only character that we know how they think and feel is the one telling the story. Because they're the ones talking, they're going to use words like I, me, we, us, because they're included in the action. They're the ones doing the action and telling you about it. Um, so you'll see the icons that I have in the circle, um, the eyes and the brain, because they can tell you first person can tell you what they see and what they think and feel. Okay. Now, don't get this confused with it meaning that there's only one narrator in the story. Okay. Recently, I've read several chapter books that um, each chapter has a different character speaking. So really in the book, you have several narrators, but for their chapter, we only hear from them. We only hear their perspective. Okay. It changes with every chapter, but it's still first person point of view because it's only that one character speaking at a time. Okay. Then you have third person and we have two different types of third person narrators. The first one is third person limited. When something is limited, it means it has a boundary, right? It stops somewhere. Um, and you'll see my icon. I only have the eyes this time. This means that this is told by a narrator or someone outside the story. Okay, this is not one of the characters. This is an observer, somebody from the outside that is just watching everything happen. For a third person limited, the narrator can only tell us what they see as an outsider, what they observe. So picture like a cameraman, somebody standing off to the side, recording everything that's happening, and that's all you can see right? That's all you can see is just what they see through the lens. The reader gets the perspective of just that person observing the action. We're not going to know what each character thinks 
or feels because you can't see that from the outside, right? Because it's somebody on the outside, they use the words he, she, they, them, because they're talking about others. They're not talking about themselves. Okay, so this one is very different from first person because we don't get the perspective or the opinions or the thoughts of one of the characters that's experiencing all the action. We just see it from the outside. Then you have third person omniscient. You'll notice that our icons changed. Now we're back to having the eyes and the brain. This is also a narrator, someone outside the story. This is not one of the characters speaking, but um, it usually follows one of the characters. Depending on the story, this third person can follow all of the characters. Okay, Sometimes you only hear them speaking about the thoughts, the feelings about the main character, but sometimes it follows several of them. Um, this narrator can tell us everything the character sees, thinks, and feels. Okay, this is like an all-powerful narrator that can see everything, can look into their thoughts, see what they're feeling. Um, so you get a very in-depth look, except for this one, it's not told by the character themselves. It's just told by somebody who has the same knowledge as them. Um, we get the perspective of someone that, that's an outsider, but they also know everything that's happening. So this isn't like the cameraman of third person limited, where they can only see from the outside. This is like an all powerful being that can see and know everything. They still use the words he, she, they, or them because they are still the third person. They're not part of the story. They just know everything that's going on. Okay. So at this point, you should have all of your notes here. Um, and hopefully these icons and the notes will help you tell the difference between first and third person and between limited and omniscient. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about second person. Second person is not very common because second person perspective is when the author includes the reader in the story. So they would say you are going, let's, let's say for example, you are walking through the forest. To the right, you see a bear, a mama bear with her cubs. You, your heart starts pounding and you decide to start running for your life. That would be second person because you're actually the character in the story. Um, I'm sure lots of you are saying, oh, I've never read a story like that because it's very uncommon. Um, it's a very specific type of story and it's not one you'll see very often. So it's not one that we go over a whole lot. Okay, but just so you're not left wondering. So now that your notes are done, make sure that they're accurate. Okay, if you need to make go back and double check that you got everything right, please do so. Make sure that your visa is completed because that helps you reflect on what was said and what you learned. Make sure you post your part A, your ask a question on Google Classroom or wherever else your teacher has asked you to do so. And be ready to discuss the video and apply the skill. Be ready to read a text and decide who is the narrator. What point of view is this told from? And also, you need to be able to say, how does that affect the story? Like, what do you know about the characters based on this point of view? Okay, remember that applying it always means you have to take the skill a little bit further. Okay, when, when we apply it and we push the boundary a little bit, it just enhances your learning and your comprehension. So make sure you're ready to do that.